Great web maps are the foundation for even greater web applications. So imagine how a faster, more intuitive, and flexible web map authoring experience could unlock a whole new world of possibilities. To showcase the latest capabilities in ArcGIS Online and how they'll allow you to map all the colors of the wind, please welcome my colleague, Catherine Smythe. Thank you, James. Today, I'm going to share with you the new capabilities of ArcGIS Online. The first update is with the new search capability. I'll go to Settings and search for the Base Map Gallery. I'll select it, and here I have the option to turn on vector base maps. And for you administrators, this is totally new. Information banners. And here's how you set one up. I'll edit the information banner, switch it on, and type in a message to be shared with my organization. For example, WebGIS Training Wednesday. I'll select a neutral green background color, and the contrast ratio tells me that I'm passing accessibility standards. I'll save the banner, and it's now displayed to my entire organization. <laughs> ArcGIS Online also has new ways of visualizing shared content. These new icons enable me to see who my items are shared with and the groups they belong to. Now, most of us are familiar with this next process. You open a map, you change the base map, you add data, and then you analyze that data. Well, I'd like to share with you the new way to explore your data with the next generation map viewer. And here's how you get there. Go to Home, and then navigate to the App Launcher, where you'll see it's currently in beta, but we wanted to give everyone an opportunity to try it. Let's check it out. The first thing you'll notice when you see the new map viewer is that it has an entirely enhanced, redesigned user experience. There are primary tools for map authoring workflows on the left and refining tools for exploring your data and the map on the right. Changing the base map is still the same, as are adding layers. Let's add this layer, showing wind speeds across the US. And now let's explore the map. I'll go to my location tool, where as I move my cursor up the coast, I can see the usual XY coordinates are displayed. But if I expand the location window, then I have the option to add several different coordinate conversions, such as decimal degrees, MGRS, and UTM. I'll select a pin and drop it. And now when I return to my location window, I have the capability to copy for later use. Now, let's zoom in to Manhattan. Anyone in the audience from New York City would know that this map needs to be rotated before it's shared. The next-gen map viewer enables me to orient my map on the fly. And there are new print capabilities, so I can export as a layout or map only. Now, let's take a look at wind power across the US. We'll explore this feature service showing the location of different power plants across the country. I'll navigate to Styles, where I'll add a field, and I can search for one, such as fuel type. If I select the Information button on the right, I can view summary statistics and top 10 values. I'll save my selection and move to filtering, where I'll add an expression based on fuel type. And as I select the different filtering options, the map quickly updates. This is because the next-gen map viewer was created using the JavaScript 4x API, which allows for faster client-side rendering. 
I'll add another expression, this time on capacity. And I'll use the histogram to remove my outliers and focus the valid data. And here we see wind farms servicing small populations. Next, let's look at population projections over the next four years. Using the new styling options, I can experiment with colors that help me find the story behind my data. But did you know, if I choose this color ramp, roughly 8% of the people in this audience will have difficulty interpreting the map due to red-green color blindness. I'll choose colorblind-friendly options from the drop-down and switch to a more saturated tone. Now everyone can easily distinguish one value from another. And the new ramp allows me to dynamically visualize the patterns in my data. Finally, let's travel to southeastern Utah, to the site of a wind farm that's recently been approved. This map is almost ready to share, but the pop-up could be configured to be a bit more engaging. Before we get to work, I'll dock the pop-up, another new capability, and then I'll move to configure pop-ups. I'll modify my attributes to only show the date and the title. And I'll add an image of the project area as well. I'll position the image above the attributes. Next, I know many of you also use attachments, so I'll add mine. And I'll choose to show them as a list to save on screen real estate. And finally, I'd like to add an advanced arcade expression that will return all of the managed lands within a two-mile radius of my project area. I'll add a text box, and I'll position it just beneath the image. And then I'll enter my expression and change the color to a brick red. The text has updated, and now my map is ready to share. The new map viewer will be available to you right now in ArcGIS Online. Uh, we will also be sending several more enhancements over the next few months. Look for it in Enterprise later this year. In the meantime, we look forward to hearing your feedback as you give the new map viewer a try. Thank you. Thanks, Catherine. And as she mentioned, we'll continue adding new functionality to the map viewer beta in future releases of ArcGIS Online, so stay tuned. <laughs>